Hi, and welcome to the My Dog Made Me Do It Naturally podcast. I am your host, Kat Jepsen, a canine nutritionist with an innate obsession with dogs and the natural ways in which we are driven to live because of them. So, let's get to it. Hey, pet parents. Today, we're going to talk about the truth and being ready for the truth when embarking upon your holistic pet parent journey. The reason for this episode comes from things that I've been thinking about recently, particularly involving how lots and lots of pet parents still don't know the risks that their pets face every single day. And they don't know pretty much a lot about what goes on in the pet industry world, especially to do with big corporations and things like that. Now, Yesterday, I posted a reel about how I helped to manage Boris's epilepsy at home. And this got me thinking about the reasons that have led me to his health protocol and how we kind of discovered what works for us. And basically, I think many pet parents who are on a holistic journey are probably on that journey because they have encountered a problem. A health problem with their pet that has driven them down these avenues into learning about specific diseases and conditions and how they can help to manage them in more natural ways and this is what happened with me and Boris when Boris was diagnosed with epilepsy obviously it sent me into an anxious frenzy where I just felt completely helpless and I felt like the situation was out of my control And it really didn't feel good. And it made me want to learn about the disease and finding ways that I could help with my own anxiety as well as helping Boris. And it was through this journey that I started researching, as always, and trying to seek answers and looking for the truth. Now, just briefly, upon this path, I started researching reasons to why epilepsy could happen, whether it was genetic, could it be linked to anything external, and obviously I found lots of conflicting information. There were studies that said seizures can be linked to vaccines and flea and worm treatments. It can be genetic, it could be due to a liver shunt, which is like little holes in the liver that release toxins into the bloodstream and they build up in the brain and cause seizures. And basically there are many different reasons. And then obviously after learning that, well, after working with our holistic veterinarian, we pinpointed it to being a stress thing. Obviously, genetics play a part, but having learned all this information, I can interpret new information and make decisions based upon this for what I think is in the best interest of Boris. Now, I'm linking this to talking about the truth because sometimes when you do go searching for the truth, it is ugly. And it can be shocking and it can be really scary, especially if what you find out is something that goes full circle to what you previously believed. And this applies to pet food as well. Now, before we go into some details about what we can learn, I want to talk about the Be More Dog Oath. Now, this is an oath that I make to my dogs in order to make a promise to be a better pet parent. And I believe everybody should make an oath like this to their dog. I will post about it on social media today, so you can make the same oath to your dog if you wish. But this is essentially my oath. As your parent, I acknowledge that I am responsible for your care, health and well-being. I promise to become a knowledgeable advocate for you to make sure I can effectively meet all of your needs as much as I possibly can on a daily basis so that you can live the most fulfilled life. I understand that you rely on me for everything and that I have the means and opportunity to provide you with the support you need as an individual for positive emotional and physical health outcomes. I know you are only here for a short time, so I promise to listen and learn from you and educate myself so I can evolve with the changing aspects of your life and health. I promise to be there for you, to fight for you, and to be more dog for you. Now, that is my be more dog oath, and that is a promise I make to my dogs. 
And that is the reason that I go searching for the truth. I go searching for connections between things and alternative solutions by looking at the whole picture. It's a holistic approach to research. We find out information from different avenues. We look at all the facts. Is it scientific? Is it hearsay? Could it be both? And then we make informed decisions based on how we interpret that information. I'm not saying that you should believe everything you read. I'm just saying you should read it and then make your mind up. And we've talked about this before, but it keeps cropping up because information has been available on the internet for years and it's still not being found. And especially with regards to pet food. I've been posting a bit about pet food recently. I have my No Fuss Fresh challenge going on at the moment. I'm looking for some founding members because I'm not just a canine nutritionist. I am a fresh food advocate. And that means that I want to help people feed their dogs fresh food because this is what's going to set them up for success with health. Now, I'm not saying that I'm against kibble and processed foods. I'm just saying I'm aware of the risks. And that is because I have done the research and found information that helps me make my decisions and form my beliefs around the area. And I think it's important that if your dog does receive a certain diagnosis, we don't sit there wondering why, you know, why has my dog got epilepsy without wanting to know more? Why has my dog got cancer? It's so unfair. Why has my dog got kidney disease? Why me? You know, why is my dog itching all the time? Instead of just asking yourself these questions, take action and learn about your dog and their environment and learn about the possible causes of things. Empower yourself to advocate for your dog and make informed decisions for their welfare. Now, obviously, I'm not saying you need to go out and study how to be a vet. And you should listen to what your vet says. And based on what your vet says, based on their diagnosis and their interpretation of the symptoms, then you know what to research. And then you can find information based on that. And we should just be risk aware before we make our decisions and not just follow suit. Not when our pet's health is at stake. Now, just a few examples of some of the shocking truths in the pet industry. Now, I have obviously read a series of books. And out of these books, you can pretty much find some shocking information somewhere. Now, the first one is Dr. Lise Hansen's book, which is the complete book of cat and dog health. And... This one, basically, it's a really good book for explaining how to look after your pet and the things that you should consider. And one of the things mentioned in this book is that the World Small Animal Veterinary Association guidelines for vaccinations on dogs, which is who basically set the guidelines for all that's to follow, actually state that adult dogs don't really need vaccines every year but every three years or longer when they are necessary. And that depends on whether their antibodies have built up in their blood, which can be tested through titer testing. Now, even though this is stated in these guidelines, it's not often followed by vet practices and yearly vaccinations are still recommended by many, many vets. So that's just one bit of information. Now, in the next book is Canine Nutrigenomics by Dr. Jean Dodds. And just an example of... A study out of this book is 30 to 40 percent of all cancers can be prevented simply by implementing dietary changes. Dr. Connie Brady in Feeding Dogs has so much information, all based on scientific studies, and he literally picks these studies apart to find any conflicts of interest or any discrepancies or any flaws or anything like that. This is a really good book if you want science based evidence. And just an example from his book is that 62% of all UK complete kibbles actually failed to meet minimum standards, regardless of what it said on the packet when they were tested in a lab. Now, another great book is The Forever Dog, The Forever Dog book by Dr. Karen Becker and Rodney Habib. This is is like an essential manual of tips and tricks you can do to help promote the life and longevity of your pet. And an example from here is how they talk about mycotoxins in pet food, Mycotoxins are toxic chemical substances naturally produced by fungi, obviously it's mould, that infects many grains, 
including the ones that I use in pet foods. And sometimes the levels of these mycotoxins, such as aflatoxins, have led to pet food recalls. In 2020, there was a US recall and this particular pet food had enough aflatoxin in it to kill more than 70 dogs and make hundreds more sick. And these pet foods aren't tested before they leave the, sh leave the factory. They're sold and then when dogs get sick, they are recalled. That's how it works. And it goes on to explain how mycotoxins can cause organ disease, immunosuppression, cancer and things like that. And this is all based on science. And then there's Food Pets Die For by Anne Martin, who is a lady who has committed her life to investigating pet food. And this is where the sodium pentobarbital information came from on my reel from the other day that um, sodium pentobarbital has been found in pet food before and the FDA even did a study to see what the risks would be to pets if it was found in the pet food. And um, this book has lots of different studies and shocking truths about pet food in there. It's not for the faint-hearted. But if you do want to find out more information about the risks of pet food, then I definitely recommend reading this book. And then finally is Susan Thixton, which I'm not sure if you know about Susan Thixton, but Susan Thixton is another lady who has committed to her whole entire life to researching pet food. And an example of the kind of things you can find on her website is that um, last year there was a study that came out that found dog DNA in pet food in America. And every single one of these people, many of them, veterinarians themselves are educated to doctorate level have committed their lives to finding out the truth for pet parents worldwide and helping them navigate this truth and giving them solutions to these truths so that they can make informed decisions for the sake of their pets now what you might find might scare you it might cause extreme anxiety i know it did for me when i started researching about epilepsy but it's important to use this to fuel your passion for change, to use it as your motivation to find the answers and do the research. You owe it to your dog to find out as much as possible and set them up for success. All you need to do is ask yourself, are you ready for the truth? Now, I hope you like this episode. It is something I am extremely passionate about. And as a canine nutritionist and a fresh food advocate and your friend and your pet's friend, I bring it to you with the most love because I care what pet parents go through. I care about their feelings. I care about their connections with their dog. I understand the extreme bond and love you have for your pet. And all I want to do is to help you make the best decisions. If anyone does have any uh, any questions about anything I've discussed today and would like further information on the studies or the books, just send me an email. Reach out to me on Instagram. I'm always here. I'm always up for a chat. Don't forget, if you do want to learn about how to feed fresh food, my No Fuss Fresh Challenge applications end today. So head over to my Instagram now. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll catch up with you soon. Thanks for listening to another great episode of the My Dog Made Me Do It Naturally podcast. Don't forget to check out the caption for any links discussed here today. And please, if you enjoyed the show, follow along and listen for free on your favourite podcast app. If you have any questions or would like to share your story, feel free to email me at mydogmademedoitnaturally at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. The purpose of this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only and should not be substituted as advice from a veterinarian or other professional. It does not form a client relationship with me, the host or any guest speakers and any information is not intended to and does not diagnose, treat, cure or prevent disease. And my guests express our own views, thoughts and opinions as individuals and the podcast neither endorses or opposes the views, products or services discussed here. If your pet is ill, always seek advice from your veterinarian. I am not a veterinarian and I do not treat disease or offer medical advice.